Hi again everyone! Here we are back, traveling again to Asia in the second lecture of Day 4 of the International Aesthetic Masters 2017. We meet now a young and very talented Taiwanese dentist, Dr. John Chu, who is one of the speakers of this Congress and who will be talking about composite restoration. John graduated from CSMC Dental School and works as a general practitioner at Xingchu City in Taiwan ever since. He is passionate about aesthetic dentistry and is the founder of the group Tsima Orange, which is a group of dentists dedicated themselves to restorative and composite works. Dr. John Chu will present some of his amazing work and expertise in a conference called Aesthetic Direct Composite Restorations. Take a special look at all of the tips and tricks that John will share with us. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Mangani and Professor Didier Dici and Dr. Tony Rotondo for sharing their priceless experience about composites. We have learned so much from them and my piece of advice is to attend their course. And also thank you, Oliver, for sharing your knowledge about occlusion and I'm using his model for the demonstration in this presentation. And thank you, Dr. Guo Yijia, for letting me be a bitch for so many years. Thank you, Dr. Wang Hao Ting, for educating me with so many things about bonding and composite. And thank you everyone in the Taiwan OD Study Club. We have come a long way. Okay, let's get the ball rolling. My goal in this lecture is to let you be able to do this kind of composite restoration easily in the mouth. There are two major problems that I had during my years of learning building up composite restorations. The first is disorientation. The second is smoothness and regularity. Let me explain one by one. First of all, you easily get disoriented in the mouth, especially with a mouth mirror and a cusp-by-cusp build-up technique. Usually there's too little space or too much space for the last cusp. Second, there's a tendency <coughs> excuse me, to create the roundness of a cusp bridge during buildup because the self-leveling properties of the material. Okay, let's take a look at a natural tooth. We can see there's a lot of irregularities on the cusp bridges here. <coughs> also here, how do we create these irregularities? 
how to create irregular shapes with composites. Let's take a look at some basic properties of composite. To begin with, I would like to talk about how to pick up and lay down a piece of composite. Here you can see me laying down a piece of composite. To begin with, I would like to talk about how to pick up and lay down a piece of composite. Here you can see me laying down a piece of composite by the instrument tip. Usually you have difficulties to lay down a smaller piece of composite. In this case, you need to use the sharp instrument and the tip of the instrument to pick up so that the area that can stick to the instrument is small. So therefore, the rule number one is to take them by the tip. Okay, these composites are arranged by their stiffness from the most stiff one on the right to the softest on the left. Let's poke them by a micro brush. As you can see here, the harder the composite, the larger area of <coughs> influence <coughs> by the same stroke of micro brush. We can see the radius of influence by a single stroke. The composite particle around that area have been pushed, deformed by the force. The larger the radius, the small, smoother you will get. We can look at the right one. This is a stiff one. Okay. The composite moves with the instrument. And the middle one more and more it deforms. And the left one is the uh, softest. Okay, now let's brush them from the side. Uh, as we brush them, you can see the ridges are forming between the brush. The harder and less slumping the composite, the sharper the ridge you will get. The right one is the hard one, so This one is uh, the slump, slumper one. And this one slumps even more. Okay, we can see the ridge is forming. From the side view, we can see uh, the, the softest one. We have the more sharp ridge. 
Okay, now, in a practical way, you will focus on the light reflection and work around it. Do not touch the light reflected area. You can see the sharp edge from the side view later. Okay, you see I'm not touching the light reflected area. This is the sharp edge created with side brush. Do not touch the sharp edge. Okay, let's see it one more time with slow motion. Observe the light reflected area here. Do not touch the light reflected area. Okay. Here is another tip. You can push the composite in different areas to get curves. You can see the curves from the side later. This is it. The curves. Push in different areas to get curves. Now here's another tip. You can see I'm trying to elongate this composite with metal instrument. At the beginning I couldn't do it because when I move sideways the composite moves with the instrument like this, like a snail. So I push it down. I push it down then that I will be able to elongate it. Let's see it one more time. I couldn't and I push it down from the side then push it down from the side and push it down. That's the way you elongate the composite. Why? Because we need the base of composite stick to uh, the base so that you will be able to move it. Because there's, uh, you need enough contact area at the bottom. Clinically, you push down the composite, let it stick to the bottom, then you, you're able to elongate it. Okay, here's another tip. You can see I'm poking the composite at the border. That's what you do clinically to clean up. Always push in perpendicular direction with short strokes. Push in perpendicular directions with short strokes to the sulcus. Work along the direction that you want to have the sulcus. Do not drag the composite. Do not drag it. Remember the radius of influence that we have just talked about. By dragging it, you will deform what you have created earlier. <coughs> now you have something like a cusp bridge that we will talk about in a moment. You can see it in perpendicular direction. Okay, just a quick summary. Okay, take the instrument by the tip. Push them from the side and to create curves. Push it down, then elongate it. Clean it with perpendicular strokes 
Okay. Let's build a single cusp. Okay. I designed a simple strategy for building a single cusp. The first layer will be a chromatic dentin. Okay. That um, the dentin provides the color uh, for the tooth. And the second layer is what I call hard enamel. Hard enamel uh, is the enamel mass that um, enable you to get oriented. Okay, uh, you will very easily get uh, a mass with only soft materials. Okay. And the third layer is soft enamel. Uh, this gives you the details. Okay, like a little ball and stuff. Okay, let's see. One by one. Let's focus on the single cusp. This is for demonstration purpose, of course. Um, the cusp of this size, uh, usually you will put an anomaly on it. First, I put a high chromatic dentin. You can see it's uh, like a rounded shape. And actually, it has almost no morphology just uh, like a u-shape on top of the high chromatic dentin we lay down the first layer of enamel the hard enamel this piece of enamel will let you have the um, orientation so that you didn't get lost and we will talk about orientation later finally you, you add some soft enamel material <coughs> soft enamel material that is uh, like a small ball at the bottom of the central groove this provides the, the occlusal stops and give you the free freedom in centric okay so what have we done so far let us examine uh, the clinical way to look at the morphology of a molar every cus tip is a tetrahedron with a cut tip what do you mean cut tip? Uh, the tip is cut here. So it is not like a, a sharp uh, tip. This is where um, the tetrahedron ends at the central groove. And running from the cut tip to the cut tip is this uh, green uh, line. This green line represents the cusp ridge. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the time we are building within, most of the time we are building within the occlusal table, um, which means most of the time we are building just the cusp ridges. So it is a super important structure that we have to bear it in mind. Okay? And uh, with this four-sided uh, pyramid, uh, we have the marginal ridges and lingual buccal groove by the sides and usually these structures forming the letter Y structure here forming a Y okay so let's summarize uh, the structural elements of molar the four side pyramid 
I just wrote a 4 here. And the marginal ridge, which is represented here with a ma. And lingual buckle groove with a L. And forming the letter Y with a Y. Okay. So for Chinese speaking people, here is a simple mnemonic. Fourth mother will love you. Or fourth mother love you. Fourth mother love you. Okay, let's talk about the small ball at the cut edge of this pyramid structure. Okay, let's look closer at the molars. Uh, this is a standard wax up for upper <coughs> and lower molars. We can see the primary elements of both upper and the molars are the same. They are two supporting cusps, yellow and blue, and one functional cusp, the green one. Let's apply the fourth mother here. You can see um, there are um, like a, a different uh, combination of this pyramid, which is cut here and here and here. This is the one cusp with four sides and the cut is here. Okay cut is here and this at the end forming a letter Y a letter Y here a letter Y here okay so uh, this is the most important tip to uh, get you oriented during uh, the molar buildup in the mouth okay you always build up the non-functional cusp first first then insert the functional cusp ridge in between okay that's very simple always build up the non-functional cusp first then insert the functional cusp ridge in between Okay, um, it's quite simple actually. Okay, but uh, there are more details. Uh, we need to uh, look 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 at it. Let's zoom in. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay, we just look at a single pyramid. A four-sided pyramid. <coughs> Let's take a closer look at a single cusp bridge. The red line here. Um, the cusp bridge is never a really a straight line. Never a straight line. Why? By using the small ball rucksack concept we can see if we want to provide this point with contact and freedoms around it then we will have something like this okay at the base we will have um, an, an elevated area for the occlusal contact and so if we do want to provide contact and freedom in centric we will automatically get this shape get the curvature like this and from the occlusal view it will automatically look something like this 
pretty much like a tea bag. So here's another tip. The real shape of a cusp ridge is like a tea bag. It is not a straight line. It's never a straight line. Okay. So another exception is that there are two cusp ridges to form the oblique ridge. The one <clears throat> is the distal buckle running uh, towards the, the lingual groove. Another one is the mesial uh, palatal uh, running towards the, the second ridge. Okay, So these two will form the oblique ridge. Uh, why is the oblique ridge so important? Let's have a closer look. Okay. This is the model provided uh, by Oliver. I have to thank him for, for this model. Okay, let's look at look at it again. When we chew, you're actually using the mesial half of the upper and distal half of the lower molars. Okay, you're chewing in this direction, in the direction of the yellow cusp. Okay, one more time. The functional cups move around the central fossa according to what we call occlusal compass. Simply put it, you're using the mesial half of the upper and the distal half of the lower molar. Okay. Here is the simple illustration. Okay, you're using this part, the mesial part of the upper molar and distal part of the lower molar. <coughs> For example, the food that get trapped in here, uh, you have a corresponding area here. So when you chew, uh, the food is crushed. Uh, by your oblique ridge and the distal half of the inner surface of the, the buckle cusp. Okay. Let's see it one more time. Chewing like this. Okay. So, um, during the closing phase of our chewing, uh, we will have the, the guiding path for uh, the closure. Usually, K9 did not provide the only guide. Uh, otherwise, the chewing efficiency will be really low. So, usually we will have um, this, what we call the functional um, wear facets, functional wear facets. Uh, here is one pair of functional wear facets uh, in the closing stroke. Okay, and here is another. Here is another pair. Okay, you can see at the the outer surface of the um, lower buckle cusp and the inner surface of the upper buckle cusp. This is uh, like a short group function, a short group function that provides the stability for your chewing system, stability and efficiency. Okay. Let's observe. 
This is a natural tooth. You can observe the functional wear facets right here. One more time. Right here. This is the wear facets. <coughs> at the final stage of closing. Okay, so the tips for the second uh, section is the real shape of the uh, cusp bridge is like a tea bag. Okay, another tip. Always build up the non-functional cusp first, then insert the functional cusp bridge in between. And the final tip always provide freedom for the occlusal stops um, with a little bowl, the soft enamel. And this provides uh, with a canine guidance, a short group function. Okay, so I think uh, that's a uh, um, pretty useful information for you. Uh, that's uh, going to the next section um, for building up a lower molar. Here you see I'm building a lower molar with a non-functional cusp first. Okay non-functional cusp first and I'm building the mesial buccal cusp because it's like a rectangular shape so it is much easier to build then I insert the functional cusp in between okay. here is the internal stand and the hard enamel non-functional cusp first okay non-functional cusp first this is the hard enamel so you will basically get shapes uh, and the missile buckle cusp rectangular shape easy to build Now, now I insert <clears throat> the functional cusp in between the Y, the, the letter Y. Okay. Now it's the soft enamel, uh, the little balls, providing the stops with the final shape the soft enamels providing the stops and you can have some secondary uh, features now let's zoom in uh, to closing the gaps uh, with the soft enamel By this way, you will get uh, more oriented with the molar buildup. Okay, that's how I built um, a lower molar. Okay, so let's look at the upper molar. Uh, I think the, the hand motion is quite annoying, so uh, I just cut everything um, with, the, um, with the hand in the frame. So you can see, 
pretty much the same. Non-functional cusp first. <coughs> then insert the functional cusp in between. Internal stem. The hard enamel. Non-functional cusp first. Insert functional cusp in between the letter Y. Then you build up the uh, oblique ridge. Soft enamel, non functional cusp. The little balls to provide um, the occlusal stabilities. Thank you so much for your attention and I really hope that this video uh, gives you some motivations and um, let's look at uh, finally the, uh, the three teeth build up together. Okay? Thank you so much. Hi, Hi again everyone. Here we are back, traveling again to Asia in the second lecture of day four of the International Aesthetic Masters 2017. We meet now a young and very talented Taiwanese dentist, Dr. John Chu, who is one of the speakers of this Congress and who will be talking about composite restoration. John graduated from CSMC Dental School and works as a general practitioner at Xingchu City in Taiwan ever since. He is passionate about aesthetic dentistry and is the founder of the group Tsima Orange, which is a group of dentists dedicated themselves to restorative and composite works. Dr. John Chu will present some of his amazing work and expertise in a conference called Aesthetic Direct Composite Restorations. Take a special look at all of the tips and tricks that John will share with us. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Mangani and Professor Didier Dici and Dr. Tony Rotondo for sharing their priceless experience about composites. We have learned so much from them and my piece of advice is to attend their course. And also thank you, Oliver, for sharing your knowledge about occlusion and I'm using his model for the demonstration in this presentation. And thank you, Dr. Guo Yijia, for letting me be in a bitch for so many years. Thank you, Dr. Wang Hao Ting, for educating me with so many things about bonding and composite. And thank you everyone in the Taiwan OD Study Club. We have come a long way. Thank you again and uh, hope to see you around. Thank you. Thank you.